take this to the blacksmith shop. Here. Hey! Make sure he replaces the bit. We will! I don't believe it. And he's still getting mail from that group that Aunt March belonged to. <sighs> Organization of know-it-all women. The Organization of American Women. Never heard of it. It's just as well. A bunch of high society snobs whose primary purpose is throwing tea parties for each other. Aunt March just loved it. Why are they sending Emmy's mail to Plumfield? Because she's told them that she lives there. She's applied for a membership, you see. She feels that her prospects are better if she's living in Aunt March's house. Tradition, you see. Stuff. Never seen any of this in here before. That looks Indian. This place gives me the creeps. Can I help you? So sorry about the mask. You need something? Yeah. Can you drop this off, Mr. Voss? Needs to be fixed. He's not here. What happened to him? Moved. I work here now. Anything else? N no. No, I, that's it. I can't believe you broke it. I didn't mean to, Tommy. See the look on his face? Thought he was gonna kill you. If I were you, I'd stay as far away from that guy as possible. Mr. Owens. Owens? You know him? Uh-huh. Mrs. Joe and I met him the other day. About the shop from Mr. Voss. Oh, you talking about Mr. Owens? Yeah. Never met a real Indian before. I seen a couple back in Boston and never actually talked to one. Well, now you have. Seems like a very nice man. Why doesn't he have an Indian name? Well, I'm sure he does, Tommy. He probably took the name Owens when he started living among white people. Oh. Why would name you want to live among white people? Might not have been a choice. Either they integrate into white society, or they're moved to the reservations. That don't seem right. It's not. I suppose it would be easy for him to just dress in white clothes and take a white name? Well, if a white person lived among the Indians, he'd probably dress like them and take an Indian name as well. Done. Now go take it off. I'll ham it up for you. Thank you very much, Aunt Meg. Oh, another new dress. A girl can never have too many dresses. I'm glad you're here. You received another letter from that women's group. So quickly. It's only been two weeks. Oh, well, maybe they should add efficiency to their motto of patriotism, tradition, and charity. Don't make fun. The Organization of American Women is a very prestigious society. They don't just accept anyone, Joe. Great Aunt March was a member for years. I think it's only right that one of us continue in the tradition. I 
What does it say? I can't believe it. What? Have you been accepted? No, not yet. But they've accepted my invitation. Invitation? I thought it would be a nice idea to hold the interview over dinner. That way it's much less formal. Oh. Oh. They're sending Mrs. Stanfield. You remember her, don't you? Yes, of course. We met her with Great Aunt March. She had horrible perfume. What did you call her, Joe? Stenchfield. Does that mean that you'll be bringing her here to Plumfield? Well, yes. Well, since this is where I live. Why do you always do this? Do what? Well, did it ever occur to you that it might be a little inconvenient for us to have a party here at Plumfield? Well, it's not a party. It's just one guest, Joe. How inconvenient can that be? That's not the point. You should have asked. You really should have. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I would have if I thought it would be such an issue. Surely you're not saying she can't come. Oh, no, I'm sure she's not saying that. Are you, Joe? All right, wonderful. This will give me the chance to do some sprucing up in here. As my way of thanking you for allowing me to do this. He was huge. He had the meanest look on his face I ever seen. He grabbed Dan by the hair and pinned him against the wall. He was reaching for his tomahawk. He was gonna scalp him. He didn't have a tomahawk. Yeah, he did. I saw it. It was about a foot long and there was dried blood all over it. Tommy, there was no tomahawk. Just wanted to know what we were doing. Yeah, and then Dan went and broke his mask right in front of him. <gasps> but he was mad. I'm surprised he didn't just kill you right there. I hear they torture people to death when they're mad at him. Yeah, well, he ain't gonna torture us because we ain't going back there. Well, we gotta go back. Nick said to pick up the bridle today after school. I ain't going back there. Well, me neither. <laughs> what? Well, just go myself. No big deal. Well, hey, it's, it's your funeral. What do you want? I came to get the bridle. It's not ready yet. Is there something else you need? I just want to say that I'm sorry about the other day. And I should ask you if I could see the mask. Yes, you should have. What's that? It's tobacco. I read that if you give it to an Indian, it shows them respect. Put the glue on here. Just enough to hold the wood together. Don't get it on the paint. Now hold it together for a few minutes so the glue can set. Where from? Lakota. You would know us as Sioux. Oh, yeah, I read about them. I'm trying to read up on Indians and books. Books are written by white men. You won't get much there. Why don't you dress like an Indian? I was raised by my people in Indian territory until I was 14. And I was sent east to a white school for Indians. I learned white ways there. I made that mask while I was there. Don't you miss Indian life? I am still Dakota. I have not lost the traditions I learned as a child. Who I am dwells inside me, not around me. Don't you miss living out in the nature, hunting your meals, and making your home with your own two hands? I think that would be a great way to live. But I don't know if it lasts too long, though. I wouldn't know what to do. Your father would teach you. 
Indian children are taught at a very young age how to survive. It is one of our traditions passed down through the generations. Just as I'm sure your family's traditions are passed down to you. You've certainly gone a long time. Tommy suggested sending a search party. <laughs> So what'd you two talk about? Ah, uh, all kinds of stuff. I was growing up in a tribe, hunting, fishing. Sounds like a fascinating afternoon. But yeah, it was. He kept talking about his family, and all these traditions. And I don't really have any. I don't know anything about my family, or where I came from. Do you remember your parents? No. Not really. They died when I was so young. Uh, I sort of remember a woman. I don't know if she was my mom or not. And I remember living with a bunch of boys when I was little. I must have been an orphanage or something. <sighs> Listen. I'll send telegrams to all of the orphanages in Boston tomorrow. Someone will certainly remember you. And they'll be able to tell us about your parents. We think? I'm sure of it. I promise you, we're gonna find out about your family. I need to talk to you. That looks like Amy Satie from her parlor. Yes. Well, that's what I need to talk to you about. Now, before you get angry, you have to remember that Amy... Joe? Joe? Over there, by the wall, but not too close to the door. What's going on in here? Joe? You're home early. What are you doing? Oh, Joe, I had the most wonderful idea. You know that portrait I've been working on of Laurie Bess and myself? Well, I'm going to finish it before dinner Saturday night. It'll look just lovely hanging over the fireplace. Where are they going with my table? Oh, to my house. I'm bringing mine in for the dinner. It's Louis the 16th. That would look lovely in here, don't you think, Joe? Amy, you never said anything about redecorating. I said I was going to spruce things up. You're moving furniture, Amy. Only two pieces. Oh, and by the way, I was wondering if the children could spend the evening in the schoolroom. Well, why can't they stay upstairs in their rooms? Oh, it would just be easier if they were out of the way, and then I don't have to worry about them getting out. Getting out? Oh, you know what I mean. Amy, don't you think you're getting a little carried away? Well, all of the women in this organization were born into wealthy families. Well, they're all society. If I have to compete with that, well, then everything has to be perfect. If they won't accept you for who you are, I don't know why you'd want to be a part of this stupid organization anyway. It's not stupid. Not to me. When we were growing up, I always wanted to go to those fancy parties and be a member of society. I hated being poor. People used to look down on us like they felt sorry for us. Maybe that never bothered the two of you, but it bothered me. I should have known you wouldn't understand. I just thought maybe you'd want to help me. All right, they can stay in the schoolroom. Thank you. Oh, just put that a little... It'll be over by Sunday. Thank you. Here you are. I have some wonderful news. This is from the orphanage that you lived at when you were younger. It is? My name is Madison. Isn't it wonderful? Apparently, a police officer brought you to them when you were about four. What? It says here that I ran away. <laughs> That's not surprising. We have to find this police officer. 
I've already sent the telegram. I'm just glad that the orphanage still had his name. I told you we'd find out about your family. I don't know why we didn't do it sooner. Daniel Madison. Keep your hands steady, otherwise they're all Mrs. Target. I'm trying. It's hard. You get used to it. Whenever you're ready. Nice. It's good. Squirrel meat is tough to chew, but it provides basic nourishment. Uh, should have got that deer. And you're all done. This is your first time you can be proud of getting anything at all. Even if it was only squirrel. <laughs> oh, I got a telegram from an orphanage. The last name's Madison. <laughs> That's wonderful. Hey, perhaps they'll know something about your other relatives as well. Some of them must still be living. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be proud to have you as a member of their family. Well, logs and off the hunt for the food. <laughs> you would have made a fine Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I got a telegram from the officer who brought Dan to the orphanage. He says he found Dan roaming in the streets and that he only knew his first name, but he needed a last name to be admitted into the orphanage. So the officer used the name of the street that Dan was found on. Maybe there's somewhere else he could look. I don't think so. The officer told me that they searched for two months to find his family, and they couldn't find anyone. He was the only link that I had to Dan's past. This whole thing was my idea. You know, I never should have promised him in the first place. Now he knows he'll never have a family, when at least before he could dream about it. Mrs. Joe, Nick, look what Mr. Owens gave me. It's to carry arrows in. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, it was his when he was a kid. Um, I'm afraid I have some bad news. I got a telegram from the officer who brought you to the orphanage. I'm sorry. That's all right, Mrs. Jill. No, for sure. Stay in the schoolroom? It'll just be for a few hours while my sister's guest is here. And why does she put this table in here like this? I hardly have enough room to put the food down. Yeah, it sure looks strange in here. Well, I think it looks lovely. You would. It looks like your house. And that sister of yours still hasn't told me what she wants me to cook for dinner tonight. Oh, Asia, I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. She's bringing her own chef, uh, Andre something or another. Her own chef? Oh, yes. He's an excellent cook. He's from Paris. Oh, I see. My cooking is not good enough for her anymore? You can, you can supervise. I see. Listen, everyone. This is very important to my sister, which makes it important to me. So please cooperate. After all, accepting life's little inconveniences gracefully is the Blumfield way. It is? It is now. Madison was the name of the street. I lost a family that I never had to begin with. I'm sorry, Dan. I, too, lost a family. When I was not much older than you, both my parents died. I felt lost, like you. 
I needed guidance. So I chose to take my vision quest early. Your what? Vision quest. It's a ritual common among many tribes. For the Lakota, it's a rite of passage into adulthood. We go out into the most desolate place we can find, without food or water, and wait. For what? For the spirits to speak to us. Do they? What do I say? Whatever needs to be heard. outside in the cold for three days without eating. Well, yeah. I asked Mr. Owens if I could do it, and he, he said, yeah, as long as you agree. I'm still, I've gone longer without eating. Yeah, you didn't have a choice back then. I don't know why you'd want to do it now. To see a vision. And then Mr. Owens said he'd adopt me into his tribe if I complete it. If? I don't know, Dan. It, this sounds awfully dangerous. Why don't we wait until you're a little older and then... Because I have to do it now. I'll be careful. I, I promise. It's freezing out there. You said I could bring a blanket. A blanket? A blanket will hardly keep you warm in this kind of weather. Mrs. Joe, I'll be part of a tribe. Part of a tradition. Please. You'll have to let me think about it. All right. Yes, it is very dangerous. And he has to be out there all alone. I will escort him to the spot I've selected and return three days later to escort him back. So for three days, he's completely alone? Yes. Mrs. Bear. A vision quest is not for the weak of spirit or body. But I've watched this boy. He is neither. Dan is lost. He's seeking something that neither you nor I can give him. A foundation. I believe the vision quest will help him discover this foundation, which will then help him find his path in life. I have faith in him. Be sure to keep it around you at all times. I'm so sorry, Joe. I tried to reason with her. It's all right. She is very talented, though, isn't she? It's a beautiful painting. Except we all look like members of the royal family. A little more to the left, Lori. That's it. Miss Joe, they've even bought their own pans. What am I supposed to do with everything? Asia, please be patient. I got the chicken! Oh, well, I'll take that. That's for me. Thank you very much. I have your gloves. Put your gloves on, please. Um, everybody all right? You need the hand or something? Can you take that? Joe! Oh, I need my violin. Hurry up. Go. She'll be here any second. Here. I know, I know. They're almost out. My coat. Has anybody seen my coat? You gotta put them closer to the fire. They're never gonna cook. Thank you, mademoiselle, but this is how it is prepared where I come from. And what are you cooking anyway? It just looks like chicken and dumplings to me. I assure you it is nothing like chicken and dumplings. It is duck, and if you do not mind, I prefer to work alone. Well, so do I. We've got to stay away from the window, otherwise we'll be seen. All right, so what are we supposed to do? Oh, well, you could do some homework. On a Saturday? Look at all this stuff. Where did it all come from? They're like costumes or something. They are. They reminded my sisters when we were little girls. We used to spend hours in the attic telling stories and putting on plays. What's this? Well, that's my family. Who drew it? Amy did. That's my father. And my mother. 
There's Meg and Amy. That's my other sister, Beth. And that is me. <laughs> That's you? Mm -hmm. well, let's take a look. Stop it. I'm sorry. It's a perfume. My, my eyes are watering. Mrs. Stanfield, I can't tell you how happy we are to have you with us. It's my pleasure, Mrs. Lawrence. Actually, we were thrilled to receive your application. We've been unrepresented in Concord since your dear aunt passed away. She was one of our finest members. Well, she always spoke very highly of your organization. She always hoped that I might become a member one day. Well, I must say, you've done a remarkable job of maintaining this lovely old home. I'd like a tour of the rest of it. No. I mean, you must be exhausted from your trip. Why don't you just make yourself comfortable and I'll check on dinner. Joe. Well, is she here yet? Can't you smell her? <laughs> Joe, Meg, what a, what a pleasant surprise. Uh, Mrs. Stanfield, al allow me to present my wife's sisters, Joe Bear and Meg Brooke. Actually, we've met once before, Mrs. Stan Stanfield, when um, I was a little girl, but you probably don't remember. Oh, yes, of course. It's a pleasure to see you again. I see you've met my sisters? Yes. It's unfortunate that your parents couldn't be here this evening. I'm sorry to hear that your father was taken ill. Ill? I was oh. Well, it's nothing, really. In fact, he's already on the mend. <laughs> yes, actually, I just saw him today. He's almost back to his old self, Amy. Well, I hope the two of you will be able to join us for dinner. Of course they will. Why don't we all sit down? Uh, my daughter Bess is on her way to join us, and the soup's just about ready to be served. What are you doing here? Well, we assumed we were invited. Well, you assumed wrong. Well, if you don't want us here, then we could just... I know. It's too late now. Just don't ruin this for me. Please. Tradition, patriotism, and charity are more than mere words to the organization. They are the cornerstones on which our lives are built. I can assure you that my family shares in the same ideals. They're an integral part of our daily lives, especially charity. In fact, Amy and Lori just founded a library for a local school. How very generous of you. Oh, yes. Father and mother are constantly doing generous things like that. The March family has a long-standing tradition of helping those less fortunate. That's right. We've always been helping out whenever we can. Remember the Hummels? <laughs> oh, yes. They were a family here in town. Very poor. One winter, they all got sick at the same time. Our mother decided that we should all go out and help with their farm. <laughs> Do you remember? The barn had not been mucked out in over a week. <laughs> so there we were, the four sisters, <laughs> up to our knees. We were shoveling for hours. <laughs> I remember that. You carried that smell with you for a week. The town. <laughs> To church? <laughs> I thought we'd never get it out of our hair. <laughs> uh, we didn't always associate so directly with the poor. These birds aren't going to cook, not unless you put them closer to the fire. Are you questioning my culinary abilities? No, I'm just saying you're not cooking these birds right. Keep your hands off my dinner. <laughs> Mr. Paris, France. I promised Miss Joe that this dinner was going to be perfect. I'm going to make sure it is. Now, give me the spur. You have to promise to see me spend the week. Let go of the purse. You. What was that sound? Oh, that's our chef. He always makes a lot of noise when he cooks. 
He's from France. So, you were telling me about your education. Yes. Well, I was tutored privately, of course. But it soon became clear that my tutor's skills were rather limited. Fortunately, Great Aunt March recognized my talent for painting. So she took me to Europe to study with the masters. It sounds as though she had a profound influence on your life. Oh, yes, she did. She took me in hand and guided me into a world that would have remained hidden had I stayed here at home. In fact, everything that I am today, I owe to her. So what you're saying is that Aunt March had a greater influence on you than our own mother and father? I can't imagine what could be taking dinner so long. What is that? Duck. Good heavens. <sighs> Mr. Owens. I'm looking for Dan. Mr. Owens, you're supposed to meet me in the schoolroom. Nice costume. Yours too. Ew. Who's wearing that awful perfume? She's gone, and she's taken with her any chance of me ever getting accepted into the organization. I asked you not to ruin this evening, and what do you... If anyone is to blame for ruining this evening, it's you. Me? Yes. Do you have any idea what you were saying? Were you listening to yourself? I wasn't the one who kept bringing up how poor we were. And that story about mucking out the barn? I've never felt so humiliated in my entire life. Neither have I. I'm just glad Mari and Father weren't at this table to hear you shame our family like that. They would be so disappointed in you. I know I am. Promise me that you'll be careful. I promise. I didn't even notice it. Actually, I like your older work better anyway. Where did you find this? The kids found it in one of our old trunks. <laughs> Do you remember the night you drew this? Christmas Eve. We were so poor. Mm. We didn't even have any presents. I'll never forget how miserable we were. Miserable? That's not what I see. Spirits will speak to you when you are ready to hear them.
Miss Joe. You've been up all night. I can't sleep. Again? That's been two nights in a row. Now, you can't keep this up. I keep thinking about him. Where he is. What he's doing right now. Tonight's his last night. It'll be the worst for him. I'll keep the water hot. Spirits speak to you? Yeah. Awful cold to be outside. They're late. I'm sure he's fine. He's not fine. Hope. He had to do something as drastic as this to get it back. Amy hasn't spoken to me in three days. I just wanted to help them. Hey, everybody. Dan's back. Mrs. Joe. Faye? The spirits. When I was walking back this morning, I got this... I don't know. This feeling. I should look down at my tracks. I suddenly realized I've been walking in the wrong direction. I've been looking backwards. I've been spending too much time worrying about what's behind me instead of looking forward. I've got to make my own traditions create my own history so that my kids and my grandkids can follow in my traditions. Thank you for letting me do this, Mrs. Joe. And 
Will you come to the ceremony tonight? <laughs> of course I will. <laughs> Mr. Owens is going to give me a Lakota name and adopt me into his tribe. I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> and everybody can come. Nick, you too. My old writing cap. I wondered where that had gone. <laughs> I'm so glad we kept all of this. Oh, look. The Pickwick Papers. <laughs> A recipe from Beth. So many memories. Oh, look. Do you remember this from our plays? <laughs> Rodrigo, the villain. <laughs> Amy hated us for making her play that part. Yes, well, she never did like being in our place, did she? That's because you always made me play the boy. I can't believe you kept all these things. But there are so many memories here. Ever since you gave this to me, I've been thinking about the night that I drew it. Remembering how happy we were, even though times were so difficult. It was because that was the night that Father finally came home from the war. Our whole family was together again. And that was the best present that I could ever ask for. I am proud to be a part of this family. And I am so truly sorry for the way that I have treated you. I only hope that there is some way that I can make it up to you. Actually, there is. That all may know that you are my brother. You may wear a stripe of red paint on your forehead and cheek. And from this day on, I will call you Looking Forward. That's it. Oh. Except for this. My gift to you. everyone. Congratulations, That's Dad. That's basketball. Congratulations. Oh, nice, Beautiful mask. Oh, sure. Beautiful mask. Let's get Looks like you were wrong. Oh, Seems to me you helped him just fine. He's right, you know. You helped Dan find his future. And Amy find her past. Pretty wonderful family, don't we? <laughs>